pleasant these time learners. This is Sir Peter, your pre calculus teacher. So this is the last topic for week number two circular function. At this end of this video lesson, we should be able to compute the exact values of circular functions on the Cartesian plane. So we're done with topic one, quaternional angles, circular functions, and unit circle. And we are also done locating the circular functions on the Cartesian plane. So in here, we need to get the exact value of the circular function. Are you ready? Let's start. Using the fact that the unit circle is symmetric with respect to the x-axis and the y-axis and the origin, we can identify the coordinates of any special angle. So all of these special angles are listed and it's very easy to get the exact value using this illustration. So remember that the sign of a function is our y given the trigonometric point p x y and the cosine function is also our y value. The tangent function is y divided by x and of course with the corresponding reciprocal functions you have y the reciprocal is 1 over y x the reciprocal is 1 over x and y over x the reciprocal which is a cotangent function which is x divided by y now let's have this example so let us consider theta, which is 45 degrees. Recalling um, theta, let us illustrate um, 45 degrees on this figure. So I'll be drawing a line which is perpendicular to the x-axis forming a reference angle, which is 45 degrees. So if this is 90 and the theta is 45, therefore we also have a measure here, which is a 45 degree angle. So this becomes an isosceles um, right triangle. So since this is a unit circle, our R is exactly one. And we know that R is also the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So let me illustrate it here. So this is how it looks like. So in a unit circle, we have one. And then how do we get the measure of its side of a 45, 45, 90 triangle? So isn't it that since this is isosceles, both the values of the legs of the right triangle will be the same. And to get the measure of the legs, that is multiplying by the square root of um, one over the square root of two. So that will be um, one over the square root of two but the square root of two is not accepted in algebra. So we have to rationalize the denominator. So the answer will be the square root of two over, which will also be the measure of this one. That's why observe that the trigonometric point has values the square root of two over two and the square root of two over two which will now represent our cosine function, which is the x value, and the sine function, which is the y value. So for the cosine and sine, we have no problem because the answers are already reflected given the trigonometric point. Okay, using that one. Now let's have let's consider 200 degrees as a reference angle. So observe that so starting from the initial side, which is the positive x-axis, 
we will rotate our angle here. So representing 210 degrees or 7 pi over 6 regions. So where can we form the right triangle? We can form the right triangle here. The reference angle now is located here. Now, how do we define a reference angle? The reference angle is the angle that the terminal side, this terminal side, makes with the x axis. So in the same thing, it should always make with the x axis. It is the angle that it makes with the x axis and the terminal side. So as you observe, since this is 180 degrees up here, and then we have 210, we subtract 210 and 180 degrees. So the reference angle becomes 30 degrees here. So this is 30. And so since this is 90 degrees, this is perpendicular to this side. This becomes 60 degrees. So therefore, what type of special right triangle do we form? Let us redraw that one. like this. So the 30 degree angle is located here. The 60 degree angle is located here. And we have the right triangle here. And we know that this is the radius of the unit circle. And this is r is equal to 1, which is also the hypotenuse of the right triangle. The side opposite the 30 degree angle is 1 half of the um, hypotenuse. So we have one half. So this measurement is one half. But since it's located on the third quadrant, this now becomes negative one half, which is the value of the trigonometric point. And the opposite will be the square root of three over two. But since it's located on the negative x axis, then that will be represented by negative square root of 3 over 2. So therefore, the trigonometric point will be located on the cosine value. The cosine value is negative the square root of 3 over 2. And then the sine value, which is negative 1 half, located on the third quadrant. Let us now get the exact values of each. So we use that trigonometric point. So for the sine 210 degrees, that will be negative one half, which is the y value. For the cosine 210 degrees, we have the x value, which is negative square root of three over two. To get the reciprocal of sine that is Cosecant, so that's one over y, or one divided by negative one half, that is negative two. And for the secant function, we get the reciprocal of this value, so it becomes negative two of um, negative two over the square root of three. Of course, we should rationalize the denominator because the square root of three is not accepted in the denominator. So we multiply, and then this will be the final answer, which is the exact value of secant to 10 degrees. For the tangent function, we have y divided by x, that's negative 1 half, divided by negative the square root of 3 over 2. So that would be um, 1 over, so we cancel 2 and 2. And negative times negative is positive. We know that since 200 degrees is located on the third quadrant, Tangent should be positive. So that will be 1 over the square root of 3, which is positive, and the square root of 3, the square root of 3 to rationalize the denominator. So we will get the square root of 3 over 3. And of course, we simply get the reciprocal of the square root of 3 over 3. That would be the square root of 3. Positive also. Remember that. On the third quadrant, it's only the tangent and the cotangent function which are possible.
Now, observed the given theta now exceeds our rotation. So our given is negative 32 pi regions, or the equivalent value is negative 5,760 degrees. So since this is negative, our rotation will be in clockwise direction. So that is 360 plus another negative 360, so negative 720, up to 16 total rotations. Okay. And until you go back to the original terminal side. So the initial side will be the positive x axis, and the terminal side will be exactly the same. So this will be co-terminal angles of the zero degree angle. So when you position the unit circle, the coordinate of the point becomes a quadrantal angle. Remember that for quadrantal angles, they are located for the families of pi over two. So in here we have zero degrees or zero regions or two pi. Or in here we have pi over two regions. We have pi, and then we have um, 3 pi over 2. So these are all the families of region measures with denominator 2. Okay, So all of them are what we refer to as quadrantal angles. And they have special points in, on them. So we have z, um, 1, 0, I mean, for a 90 degree angle or pi over two regions, we have um, zero one. For a 180 degree angle or pi regions, we have the coordinate um, negative one, zero. And for this quadrant angle, which is 270 degrees, it's exactly equivalent to three pi over two regions. That is um, zero, negative one. Still, we follow the cosine and sine value for every trigonometric point. So if this is x and this is y, then the cosine value will be 1 and the um, sine value will be 0. So let us observe that one. Okay, so look at the quadrantal point, and I mean the trigonometric point represented by the um, coterminals ang angle 0 degree or 360 degrees or 0 regions or two pi regions. So our reference point or the trigonometric point is one, zero. Yeah, that one. So let us answer this question. So sine now is our y value. That is zero. Our cosine negative 5,760 degrees is one. For the cosecant, that is the um, reciprocal of sine. So that would be 1 divided by 0. So it becomes undefined. For the secant, um, negative 5,760, we have 1. For tangent, we have 0 divided by 1. So that will be 0. For cotangent, that will be 1 divided by 0, which is and the five. So notice that it is possible to get negative values, positive values, zero, or undefined values on the exact values of the circular functions. So I hope that you learned something from this discussion. So we are now done with week number two circular function. For our next video lesson, we will now proceed to week number three, the domain the range, the graph of a circular function, and simple harmonic motions. So this is again Sir Peter, your pre-calculus teacher. Good day.